Bugatti has once again made a breakthrough that leaves us all in awe. While most people believe that the era of combustion engines has peaked as developments slowly shift towards electrification, Bugatti isn't following the trend. Instead, they've announced their latest engine with a V16 configuration, a V engine with eight cylinders on each bank. This is a groundbreaking innovation we haven't seen in mass-produced cars for over 80 years. Previously, Bugatti was already considered bold for developing the W16 and positioning it as the only mass-produced passenger car with a W16 cylinder configuration. Now, they are working on an even crazier project, a new V16 engine. Although the specifications and information provided are still limited, we can learn a lot from the images officially released by Bugatti. So, let's dive into all the details about this V16. However, to truly understand this engine, we also need to look back and comprehend its journey to this point, starting with the masterpiece we just mentioned, the W16 engine in the Bugatti Veyron. All right, before we dive into the discussion about Bugatti's V16 engine, we want to let you know that this video is sponsored by JLCMC, your one-stop solution for all mechanical component and high-quality equipment needs. Whatever your engineering project, JLCMC offers thousands of quality products at affordable prices. From precision components, mechanical tools, to specialized equipment like 3D printer parts, CNC machines, and more, JLCMC provides everything you need to ensure the success of your projects. So, visit JLCMC.com now and register through the link in the video description to get a $9 discount coupon. It all started with the Bugatti Veyron, designed with an 8-liter W16 engine configuration. Essentially, this engine is composed of two VR8 engines placed at a 90-degree angle for each cylinder bank, plus an additional 15 degrees for the angle of each adjoining cylinder row. It's not just the displacement and configuration that are extraordinary. This engine is also equipped with four turbochargers, and in its most powerful version, the Veyron Supersport, it produces 1,200 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 1,500 Newton meter of torque from 3,000 to 5,000 RPM, and a max rev of 6,500 RPM. The advantages are obvious, immense power, a large engine, and a uniquely designed twin-quad turbo VR8 setup that is perfectly suited for elite-level hypercars. Although it may not be accurate to describe this engine as compact, placing 16 cylinders in this W configuration, compared to a V16, for example, is actually quite effective and relatively compact in terms of dimensions when considering its capacity and the number of pistons it contains. Then, as we transition from the Veyron to the Chiron, what advancements were made to the W16 engine? In terms of specifications, the Chiron and Veyron actually appear similar. Both still use an 8-liter W16 engine, with two VR8s at a 90-degree angle and four turbochargers. However, the Chiron is much more powerful, with 1,600 horsepower and 1,600 newton meter of torque, along with a slightly higher max rev. So, the question arises, and this is the interesting part we need to consider. How did they manage to tune the same engine configuration to achieve greater power? The major change lies in the turbochargers. There are two main changes. First, the size of the turbos increased by 69%. Second, they now use sequential turbocharging, which we've also discussed in detail before. Mechanically, in the Veyron, each group of four cylinders had its own turbocharger that would be active from start to finish. Now, in the Chiron, they use a shared manifold for each cylinder bank. With sequential turbocharging at low RPM, each set of eight cylinders uses one turbocharger. As the RPM increases, a valve gradually opens, and both turbochargers work together to boost at higher RPMs. This provides better response and more torquey at low RPMs, while also maintaining boost at high RPMs. When we look at the torquey curve, the difference is clear. In the Bugatti Veyron, the peak torquey range is relatively narrow, around 2,000 RPM. With the sequential turbocharging strategy in the Chiron, the peak torque range is wider, 
allowing the torque to contribute more effectively at both low and high RPMs, more than doubling the previous peak torque range. It's a different story if you only use two larger turbos compared to a pair of sequential turbochargers. You would only get more torque at high RPM, but it would be weak at low RPM due to the spooling process. On the other hand, if you only use smaller turbos compared to the design in the Veyron's engine, torque at low RPM would increase, but boost in torque at peak RPM would be sacrificed. Now, of course, the combination of sequential turbochargers eliminates these drawbacks, creating a wider flat torque curve. All right, so if we look at the progression from the Veyron to the Chiron, the main goal in terms of performance was not only to increase torque, but also to broaden the torque curve. This means not just boosting power, but also making that power more usable over a wider range. Let's keep this in mind as we move on to discuss the next evolution with the V16 engine. Speaking of the V16 engine itself, it's worth noting that this type of engine has been made and used before, but only for a very short time. It all started with the Cadillac V16 around the 1930s with a 45 degree angle. Some of you might be wondering, why was a 45 degree angle chosen? The reason is to evenly distribute the power strokes among the cylinders. To make it easier to understand, let's break this down with a bit more detail. To calculate the firing order interval, we need to understand that for a four-stroke engine, it takes two complete engine revolutions to complete the firing order of this Cadillac V16. That means there are 720 degrees of rotation. When we divide this by 16 cylinders, the result is 45 degree. This means that combustion will occur every 45 degree of crankshaft rotation. This is crucial in the design of a V16 because it ensures that there is always a firing event every 45 degree of crankshaft rotation. Cadillac essentially adopted the configuration of two inline eight-cylinder engines with a 45 degree angle. However, this differs from the Bugatti V16. We could say that this engine is configured as two V8s connected together with a 90 degree cylinder bank angle. It's evident from this new photo posted online. We can see there are numbered labels for each cylinder, and these labels provide a clue to the firing order process. So, how does this firing order indicate that this is a 90 degree V engine? We can see that cylinders one and three are opposite each other, meaning that when one cylinder fires, after 45 degree of crankshaft rotation, another cylinder fires, and then after another 45 degree, the next cylinder with label three fires. This indicates that there is a 90 degree crankshaft rotation between two cylinders sharing the same pin. If they share the same pin with a 90 degree firing interval, then we can conclude that the engine configuration is clearly a 90 degree V engine. Another interesting aspect of the numbering on this engine is that all the odd numbers are on one side of the engine, while all the even numbers are on the other side. This means that the combustion process alternates between the two sides, the odd side and the even side. In other words, this engine is essentially a combination of two separate cross-plane V8 engines. To make it easier to understand, let's label the odd side as A and the even side as B. By dividing it this way, we effectively have two separate cross-plane V8 engines. To understand this, imagine we have two rows of cylinders that we divide into two groups, one through four and five through eight, and then another one through four and five through eight mirrored for the engine with label B. For each of these groups, we reconstruct the firing order just like on a regular V8 engine. So, for this V16 engine, the first cylinder corresponds to the first cylinder of the first V8, the second cylinder corresponds to the seventh cylinder of the second V8, the third cylinder corresponds to the fifth cylinder of the first V8, and the fourth cylinder corresponds to the second cylinder of the second V8. When we do this for all the firing orders of these two V8 engines, we get the firing order for each V8 engine. In a cross-plane V8 engine, typically the outer cylinders fire first, then the inner cylinders. This can be visualized as follows. Four outer cylinders fire, then four inner cylinders, and so on. On a cross-plane crankshaft, the firing pattern alternates between two outer and two inner cylinders. By looking at this firing order, we can see that cylinders two and three, 
as well as 6 and 7, are grouped together, which means the order is inner, outer, inner, outer. This shows that both of these engines are cross-plane V8s. This configuration balances the combustion, with one engine firing an outer cylinder while the other engine fires an inner cylinder, and vice versa. There's one more crucial detail for all of this to work properly. If we alternate between odd on one side and even on the other each time, it means we have a 45-degree crankshaft rotation between these two engines. So, for this firing order to function correctly, the crankshaft must be offset by 45 degree from the crankshaft of the other V8 engine. When viewed from the side, one crankshaft forms a cross, and the other must be rotated 45 degree to ensure the firing intervals alternate correctly. Okay, honestly, Mate Remac, CEO of Bugatti, actually posted some prototype engine photos on Facebook. So, here we have some images that we can analyze, First, we can see the crankshaft, and since two cylinders share a common crank pin, we can confirm based on the firing order that it is a 90-degree V8. You can also see that it is clearly a cross-plane crankshaft, which in the middle has a 45-degree offset, creating two V8s that alternate power strokes every 45-degree of crankshaft rotation. Furthermore, we also find a photo of the engine block where we can easily see that this engine has a 90-degree bank angle. Moving on, it's important to understand that Bugatti has only confirmed so far that it is a V16 engine. However, a hybrid powertrain will also be integrated. These are the two confirmed aspects. For more details, the engine will use a naturally aspirated V16 capable of producing up to 1,000 horsepower, as confirmed by Mate Remac himself. It will be combined with two electric motors at the front, a 24.8 kilowatt hour battery at the rear, and the V16 engine will also be paired with another electric motor to replace the turbochargers. So, it can be said that this engine will use a total of three electric motors, two units for driving the front wheels, and one unit paired with the V16 ICE to drive the rear wheels, replacing the turbochargers with a total peak power of around 1800 horsepower. Okay, the big question is, why did Bugatti choose this V16 hybrid strategy? So, Bugatti's CEO, who is also the CEO of Remac, is combining their two strengths, electric and combustion, into one vehicle for maximum performance. In addition, this concept will offer a truly unique experience. That's what Bugatti means by pursuing uniqueness from the start. Even though this engine will become more complex with the V16 and electric motors, this is not something that will be too concerning for Bugatti customers. Okay, there's actually a lot more to say about this engine. However, due to the lengthy video production process and to refresh everyone's minds, we will continue with a more in-depth discussion about Bugatti's V16 engine in the next video. So, if you're interested in a deeper dive into this topic, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. Thank you for watching.